Welcome back to part three of three of this Dungeons and Dragons session. Uh, the recap from the last hour will be done by Babs. So there was this box, and we were trying to open it, and we thought the traps were taken care of by Brieg. Thought that he had taken care of that. So Din decided it would be a good idea to pry the box open with a dagger and exploded the inn, killing several civilians. And then all these snake guys suddenly appeared, and there was lots of smoke and fire and death, and a very helpful wolf, and things are dead. I think we'll have, yep, everything is dead now, including everybody in the inn, but not us. We lived. Yay, us! <laughs> Hooray! Some of us by the skin of our teeth. Okay, so, the inn is on fire. You are, and hmm? what's-his-face magic-handed the box out of the inn, which was genius. The inn is on fire. You yes. are all injured. There are several corpses of lizard-type people lying around in the street. A crowd seems to be sort of gathering around the outskirts of the, the square. It is quite early in the morning, so there's not a lot of people, but there are people who are starting to filter in and are gawking and paying attention to you. All of you. What would you like to do? Is is this thing in the middle of the square here, is that a well? Yes. Right there? Great. Um, I, Harbeck turns around, calls out to the gathering crowd. The snake men were trying to burn down the inn. Come make a fire line. Bring your buckets. And uh, we're going to just blame the corpses on that, and start working with the well. Uh, but, Harbeck, I thought that the inn was on fire because the... Did... Shh, they're, they're gonna help put it out. Is, okay. is there a... There's a second story to this inn that has people that might be sleeping? Uh, and, yes. And perhaps not yet dead? I, I suspect yes. anyone who was sleeping heard the explosion and has a lot of adrenaline right now. Yes, but they could very well be cut off from escape. So because either they would have to jump out the second story windows or run through a common room that's on fire and full of smoke. So do these uh like little stands actually have tarp roofs like it looks like? Yeah. Yeah, they've got like canvas <coughs> uh canvas cupboards. So I'm going to yell out somebody We'll we'll use the the tent roofs as as a landing pad for the people on the upper stories. Hurry, help! And then I'm gonna start running around in mage hand, knocking on the windows and telling them to like trying to get people's attention on the second story. Hey, how much can I use elemental attunement to throw water at this? It says I can shape a cubic foot of water. That is seven gallons. So can I like fire hose out of this well at the inn? With monk powers. So basically you're shaping it. So it fits through the door? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'm shaping it into a long snaky shape. Into the inn. <laughs> Seven gallons at a time. Yeah. And how many... Does that cost you key or anything like that? Or No, it's like a... Cantrip. Cantrip thing. thing. Yep. So it's like, it's like roughly a gallon a second, right? If each round is six seconds. Yeah. Yeah. You're like... That's not a small amount of water, I suppose. <laughs> it seems oh, like until the fire line gets here, that's probably faster than they'd go. Yeah, yeah, why not? Let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> All right, so, so Harbeck starts weaving his hands and doing some Tai Chi motions, and water dances out of the well and starts streaming through the door and pouring into the inn. We're going to put this thing out. He's the avatar. <laughs> yeah. Water bending. Water bender? <laughs> the water bender. <laughs> Which means something completely different in England. Um, so, we're trying to put the fire out. Uh, everybody's rushing around. There are lizardmen lying on the ground. Uh, there's a lizardman inside. You knock on the windows of the inn. Doesn't appear that there were actually any other guests staying. Everybody was. Everybody was down having breakfast and died. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Our gear was staying in those rooms. Put the fire out. <laughs> it is very unlucky to stay in this inn. Uh, okay, so after a few minutes of, of intense concentration from Harbick squirting water at the inn, he manages to sort of dampen the fire enough. Like, the fire had started and it had caught onto all of the fabric and things like that, but this was an old building. Um, and, like, the floors were... had had ale spilt on them for, you know, years potentially, and it soaked through and would, you know, it, it didn't catch a light very easily. The fires were like spot fires in particularly dry patches, and you do manage to put the fire out relatively quickly. Um, so, you manage to put the fire out, with the help yes. of some of the townsfolk as well. Uh, the inn, although it's worse for wear, is not burnt down or uninhabitable um, but it's going to take quite some time to restore it to its former sort of glory-ish yeah yeah it's former I wouldn't I wouldn't call it glory <laughs> but <laughs> it, it's former uh, like decor and so forth it's yeah. um, go ahead and roll that for me flick so, yes, that's basically the situation. Uh, but you have put the, the fire out. Okay, what do you guys want to do? Uh, Harbeck thanks the townspeople for their help and reinforces the story that the lizard men set the inn on fire and we were just eating breakfast and happened to defeat them because we're good at fighting. Sort of sells that to the people as they go back to bed or wherever they go. Um, and I suppose I go check on my stuff in my room and make sure it's all still okay. I'm gonna go see if I can figure out where you tossed the yellow crystals. Oh, good where idea. they landed. Mm. Remember not to touch it. I'll help Din with yep. that. Okay, so can I get an investigation check from the two who are looking for the crystal? And can I get, uh, what, what did you say you were doing, sorry, Lama? Um, after the crowd has dispersed, I'm going up to my room to make sure that the gear I had left in the room survived. Okay. All right. Uh, what is Rogar and Tavern doing? Um, the like fires the... are out totally, and hmm, I... I think I would like to uh, throw some cure spells out on people just to make sure everybody's okay, actually. Harbeck, you look the most injured. Mm -hmm. Harbeck is quite injured. I'm going to move over to the spellcaster and see if he has any sort of belongings, markings, symbols, items, anything. He is... Completely naked and genderless, as far as you can tell. Um, although sexing a snake or a lizard is not easy. I know that from experience. Um, <laughs> I, I actually, I do. I had, I had a snake, so. The, the verb sexing does not mean yeah. what you think it does, Eversor. It does not. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <sorry. laughs> it's not the childish way to say something else. Um, <laughs> so, anyway... Uh, no, no symbols, no books, no tomes, no scrolls, no indication of alignment or anything like that. Um, the one thing that you do notice is that um, on the back of its head, so like you saw the, the weird brow and crest and thing on, on its skull, the bony parts of it, and its skull and head seem to be larger than the other lizard that you found, but tattooed. Well, actually, not tattooed. More like, um, uh, like scarred almost into the back of its head is the unholy symbol or the holy symbol of Sarath. Okay. Uh, other than that, that's it. 
Um, and the investigation checks, we got a 5 and a 19. Okay, so, Eversaw is wandering off, but that's okay, uh, because we can inform him of what happens in just a second. Uh, you head on over to find out where that crystal landed. And you sort of, they come over to here, sort of looking in the path that Llama may have thrown it. Was it Din that was helping Llama? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. Um, not very effectively. I'm not good at looking for things. Yeah, Din's not really paying that much attention. <clears throat> He's more interested in the hordes of people that had started to gather. Uh, however, Brieg does notice something, specifically a small street urchin wearing unusual clothing, holding a small leather bag that glances at Brieg and then quickly ducks around a corner. So we need to know what Brieg does in that circumstance. Now, I'm going to be back in just two shakes of a lamb's tail. So don't yes. go anywhere. I'll like we'll, looks like Briggs on his way back. We'll tell him. I'm going to put a baby back in bed. Briggs! While you were looking for the yellow rock, you saw a street urchin with a little pouch look at you and run around the corner. So think about how you respond to that when Lolash gets back. So I did not find the yellow rock... Instead, I found a street urchin with a pouch. Indeed. Well, it looks like it has a yellow rock in it. Should probably go get that. Yeah. Unfortunately, Harbeck is upstairs being tended to because he has um, lots of missing hit points and was checking on his brewing supplies, which he left in his room. So, I can't go help you with the search. Okay, I'm, I'm coming! I, I have a plan. Okay, we filled in break. What's the plan? Uh, so I'm gonna well, I'm gonna chase the urchin, and as soon as I get back in sight and within thirty feet of him, I'm going to cast a spell. Do you need my magic rope? Nope. Okay, so you're going to try and chase him around the corner. Yeah. You run around the corner. He's gone. Uh, you can't see him anyway. What do I see around the corner? T twisting, winding alleyways. Buildings with open doors. It's like the streets of the streets. It's a maze. Awesome. Den. I hope that was the guy that Harbeck needed to give the crystal to. I don't think it was. Do you check down that side? Uh, chat brings up a good point. Because I'm a rogue, I for some reason move twice as fast as everybody else. So I have that extra move action. So I'm just going to start like peeking down every alleyway, glancing in doors. I'm going to have my wolf come help me with this because he might be helpful with this. Oh, he can smell things. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can I get a... So Here. Din is going to take the... 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 Uh, planned, intelligent way of trying to actually track the child yeah. with the help of the wolf. So can I get yeah. a survival check from Din? Uh, but Brieg is taking the, oh crap, we need the crystal back idea. I move really fast and is looking everywhere he can look as quickly as possible. Can I get an investigation check? Yes. My wolf is, if my wolf is helping, do I get advantage on that? <laughs> I think your wolf has advantage if it can use smell to aid or in the hearing. tracking. Yeah, smell hearing or hearing. Or, so, uh, you could use smell, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I would say you can use smell. Ooh, I man. can't believe you rolled a one and a twenty. Well, you <laughs> it's know, it's pretty cool. I do what I can. Yeah. That's good dice. Like a one in four hundred chance or something, isn't it? Yeah. Is that how you math? So, um, ever saw you? You can't see. <laughs> yeah, I. Yeah. Poke your head in, in every doorway, every window, every alleyway. You just can't see him. Uh, Din, however, has... Her wolf has apparently picked up a scent. Um, and Din, I guess you're going to follow along? Yeah, oh yeah. I'm following the wolf. Okay, so the two of you are heading down an alleyway... 
trying to track this small child. Yeah, if I, uh, if I notice that the wolf appears to have caught a scent, I will give up my frantic glancing in every doorway and just go follow the wolf also. Okay. The wolf runs off. The two of you are following. Eventually, you catch up with a small child who is hiding behind a box in an alleyway. And he peeks out and sees you coming and frantically tries to run away. I cast a spell. Okay. I'm going to tell him a joke. (laughs) (laughs) It's so much more effective than just grabbing a kid. They could, like, bite you or poke you with something. (laughs) Uh, Okay, what's the uh, DC on that? It is... Let's cast the spell. Fifteen. And it's wisdom, right? Yeah. I wonder what the wisdom value of... A street small urchin. street urchin is uh, probably slightly above average. They have to be street aware of their factors surroundings. Into wisdom. Prob- yeah, probably like at least a plus one. Yes, but they also haven't grown up to adulthood, and so uh, they don't yeah. have any wisdom really. <laughs> That's fair. I mean, it's minus five. Uh, I, it's minus all of them. It's minus all of them. I actually went with minus two. I rolled a negative one. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so he turns around and grins at you, and he's, he just has this stupid smile on his face, and then breaks out giggling, like only a child can giggle, and drops the bag on the ground and rolls around. I'm just going to run over and pick up the bag, and then drop a couple coins, <laughs> and say, good luck. Okay. Well, that was super kind. And then, and then we're heading back to the inn? Yeah. Should look in the bag. Oh yeah, I'll glance in the bag and make sure that it's actually the crystals. That's a good point. That was your conscience. That was a little lump. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we just need to type it into the chat. That's his inner monologue. <laughs> yeah, because he's schizo. As long as it comes through chat. Right. No, uh, you look in the bag. Yes, there is a little yellow crystal inside the bag. Okay. Great. Okay. So you head back to the. Uh, <laughs> you head back to the inn. I considered dismissing the spell after I got the bag, but I thought, you know, this kid probably doesn't have a lot of opportunity to laugh. A good belly laugh is good for you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Just concentrate on it for the next fifteen hours. <laughs> no, it only like, it only lasts for up to one minute. I'm okay. just gonna let him laugh his head off for a minute. <laughs> If nothing else, it will distract him from following you. <laughs> and it will strengthen his to... core. Like, belly yeah. laughs are good for the abs. Yeah, I was going to say, anybody who's laughed solidly with a proper belly laugh for a full minute will know that he's not going to be chasing after you anytime <laughs> soon because no. he's going to actually be sore. <laughs> um, Alright, you head back to the inn. Uh, everybody is now back at the inn, which is still smoldering, um, <laughs> but has, has been, you know fully extinguished. You're confident going into the building, and it started to air out. The smoke is clearing. Um, what about the guys who didn't chase after the little kid? Uh, so, Harbick and Tabron and Rogar, what were you guys doing while they were off for sort of five or ten minutes? Um, I guess that's going to depend on whether any town guards have come to see what the commotion was about. Uh, I suppose if not, we've become, like, Consolidating and stacking snake bodies for however we dispose of our dead things and searching for anything valuable and doing the sort of post slaughter thing that adventurers do. Okay. Let's just throw them in the well. I think that's what we did last time. <laughs> as far as terrible ideas go. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Tabarin has the wolf has plenty to eat for a few days. <laughs> Tabarin's sitting off to the side. He's got the uh, um, necklace in his hand that has the dirt in it, and he's his eyes are closed and he's deep in thought and prayer. Thought and prayer. I didn't know those two things went together. Um, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that's 
personality. This is a non-political a channel, Flash. <laughs> <laughs> See, over on my channel, that'd be fine. I'd just say it out. Right. Can I take a short rest and use a hit dice? Is that a thing? <sighs> no, you need a full hour. It hasn't been a full hour yet. But, but that's something that we might be able to do in a minute. Okay. Depending on the outcome of what happens. That's right. Yeah. Um, also, Tabron, I believe you're now in possession of a little box. What Ooh. box? I have a dagger. The box you <laughs> rescued from the fire? I am. It's okay. tucked safely away. <laughs> Nobody's playing with box. Um, <laughs> okay, so anybody else want to do anything before before the sort of commotion dies down and um, anything like that? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've checked the brewery in the inn and my... Brewing supplies and alchemist supplies that were left behind, and all that was okay. Yes, a little smoky. Yeah. Sure. Um, then I'm good to like finally get a decent rest. Harbeck is very tired. Um, I have a, a quick kind of, kind of non sequitur question. Yes. I have written down a uh, treasure that we got from the boat. I have written down a thousand gold pieces in gems and a thousand silver pieces in coins. Was that per each or party wide? That was party wide. Yep. Okay. Yeah. That was just just a little bit of monies. Okay. So and and of course the the ring, which the, have the, the ring and a book in something that looks like draconic. Yes. Those are that's all of the things that I've written down. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, all right, interesting, interesting, okay, we'll discuss that at a later stage. So, uh, the crowd starts to disperse, nothing to see here, a bunch of people, a bunch of, like, awful lizardmen trying to burn down an inn for whatever reason, they don't ask questions, they're common folk. They don't think. They just work the fields and so forth. Um, <laughs> but Everything is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but the, uh, don't have anything. the innkeeper comes back carrying uh, <clears throat> like food supplies and things under his arms. And oh, as he hey. gets close, as he gets close, and you see him, Lama, you see him coming from a from from a good mm -hmm. distance away. He drops all of the supplies that he's carrying and stands open-mouthed, gawking at his precious inn. I'll walk over to him and help him gather up his groceries. Um, it's a good thing that we woke up so early. These lizard men set fire to the inn. We were able to stop them and get the fire put out, but the in the commotion and the, the heat of battle, a bit of, a bit of damage was done. Can I have a deception check, please? I hope he really wants to believe me. <laughs> because uh, deception is not really my strong point. I hope he really wants to believe me, because that was middling. He turns to you, one dwarf to another, wraps an arm around your shoulders, which is impressive for a dwarf, um, and says, you don't have to lie to me. <laughs> Will your friend there be fixing everything again? Uh, I'm worried the damage this time might be beyond his ability, but I'm sure that he'll do what he can. And we'll do what we can to, to repay you for any damages or repairs or lost business. Right, well, until you do, you're renting all of the rooms. That seems fair. And he collects the rest of his groceries and heads inside to have a look at what you've done to this poor inn. This poor, poor inn that has been exploded and set on fire and everything else. After a while, the uh, other two come back. Everybody is now here. The corpses are being taken away by the city guard. They're trying to determine... Oh, now the guard shows up. <laughs> yeah. 
Typical. God. <laughs> yeah. um, and, uh, and the crowd, like I said, has dispersed. It doesn't appear like anybody's going to want to have a drink in the inn for a while, which is an interesting thing. Um, but now the party is free to rest, to chat, to try and open the box again, to <laughs> discuss what their next move is. I am going to point out two things, though, while we, uh, well, before we sort of get into that uh, for the last bit of the stream. One, there was a spell that was supposed to sanctify this ground and protect it against the followers of Serath. It was cast by Rogar's friend. That's right. That happened several sessions ago. So, how did the followers of Serath get into the building? Question. Uh, and the second thing I want to remind you of is... Uh... Actually, no, I'm not going to remind you of that. <laughs> so, yeah, you're all in the inn. So while, you... while we take our short rest and everyone is recovering and Brieg somehow managed to escape that encounter without taking any damage, uh, I'm going to investigate this golden onyx ring. And by investigate, I probably mean put on at some point. So, you know, I'll, I'll study it a little bit first, but... Okay. Uh, what is everybody else doing? I'm using a hit While, dice. Uh, just, just resting and hit dicing? Okay. Yeah. Uh, you are having a short rest, then. Mm. Spend your hit dice as you will. I'm using a lot of hit dice, apparently. <laughs> does, uh, does short rest do anything to my exhaustion from smoke inhalation? No, you lose one level of exhaustion for a full night's sleep. Yeah, so yeah, you need two days of recovering to get back up. Yeah. Wow. That's rough. Exhaustion is tough. But appropriate. I mean, I used to do some uh, work with the volunteer Bush Fire Brigade over here in Australia because, you know, we have all of the bush and and it All catches fire. on fire. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've been in a situation where I suffered from some smoke inhalation. It wrecks you. Like, really, really exhausts you. Spend all of the hit dice. <laughs> um, Shoot. Yeah. Apparently. I, I, I One, spent two, five. Three, yeah. four. L luckily, we have seven of those to go five. around. Five. <laughs> five? Five. Okay. Uh, and while you're all sort of kicking back, relaxing, resting, with a mug of ale in one hand and your feet up on something that isn't burnt, uh, you are putting on the ring, Breeg. Yeah, after, after looking at it for a while, if, if Arcana can give me any information on it, I'm, I'm really smart and have some magical ability, though I'm not specifically trained in arcana but yeah then i'm gonna put it on okay you can you can try an arcana check for sure okay go ahead and give that a crack why don't you yeah that that didn't do much <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that isn't really gonna help you it appears to be a ring i'm fairly confident it's a ring it's definitely a ring and with that determined i will put it on a finger because that's where rings go right yeah, you know, normally. I understand there are some rings that go on toes, but we'll, we'll stick with finger on this one. <laughs> Toe rings. Okay, uh, you put the ring on, and nothing happens. Oh, that's disappointing. Do I feel there are any... some unusual markings on the ring. Um, like, in the filigree, there's definitely, like, a repeating pattern. You don't know what it is. You've never seen any kind of script or language. Hush, bash, ding, badok. Hush, no. <laughs> <laughs> that was really creepy. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? Did I leave a YouTube open somewhere? <laughs> uh, but yes, so... <clears throat> that happened. So, did... Are those markings... Do they look like anything in particular? Or is it anything that I can read? Nope. Can any of you Nothing read this? Uh, can I read it? Uh, you can do a knowledge history. What languages do I even speak? Which isn't actually even called knowledge history anymore. Common and dwarven. It's called history. 
intelligence. That's just gold history. <laughs> no! Um, but you can do that. <laughs> Harbeck can very decidedly not read that. You also recognize that it's a ring, probably intended for a finger. Unless it is in Dwarven. <laughs> Which it isn't, no. Rogar, how about you? We found a lot of things with Draconic written on them. This doesn't look like Draconic, but... You don't speak I Draconic, imagine that so you don't it really is know. Not Draconic? <laughs> it's not Draconic, no. Uh, but you can also do a history check if you wish. Are we all... Sure. You have advantage sure. taking a look at this ring? Is that sure. What we're, we're all sitting around resting. Um, hey! Rogar, my what do you need? good roll all night, other than when I healed myself <laughs> Did he need the 20 or did he need the 18? Because he is exhausted and that's an 18. <laughs> yeah. Because the advantage cancels the disadvantage. No, he needed an 18. He actually needed the 17, but that's fine. Um, so, uh, you recognize the markings, Rogar. You don't speak the language. It's a language that is, like, seriously guarded. Um, but you recognize the markings. You, uh, a long time ago, uh, you were told a story by an elder in your village of a fight they had uh, in, uh, in the, the far northern reaches of the free land of Ameris, almost like uh, up at... Uh, you, you might want to pull up the map, actually, for this llama. Um, I might even move everybody over so we can see what's going on here. The top west hand, uh, like yeah, northwestern corner of the map. Northwestern? Yep. Which way is west? Um, okay, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> my, my brain didn't do west very quickly. The Never eat no. Yeah, north left <laughs> I like that too. <laughs> the up um, right. So, north of the Loranos Mountains, um, up towards the Valley of Mists, uh, a wandering war band of, of your, your fellows, your, your dragon kin, uh, encountered a, a, an opponent they'd never seen before. They were, they were these lizard-type people, blue-skinned, um, and they, they wielded a magic that was undetectable. Like, they were guerrilla fighters, and no, no detect magic could help. No dispel magic could help. Nothing would work on them. Um, and they you know, ran around completely naked, no weapons, no armor, their entire species seemed to have a grasp of this magic, which was rare because this was just after the cataclysm when magic was starting to fall apart. Uh, however, the, they basically chased the war band off. Like, this is, you know, a, a highly skilled band of warriors from your tribe, uh, and they got chased s screaming like little children back to their homeland. Um, but before they left, the elder, this is what the elder says anyway, before they left, one of your, one of your tribesmen managed to grab a, like a, it's like a, a small rock, that yay big, flat, almost like a tablet, um, and on that tablet were these markings, and so you're aware of those markings, and you've been told to try and avoid them because they're used by the savage people from the north who wield magic like no other. And that's the history that you know of these people. I assume all that got re relayed. I was trying to think of if I could put together the, the Spark Notes version. <laughs> the markings uh, are bad. Rogar is a is a person of few words. Few words, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is from a very dangerous tribe of lizard men far to the north. Oh, if he tells us... Mm. Li lizard men, what do you mean? Like what we've been fighting? I haven't seen them myself. I've only heard of them. They were... very dangerous. In what way dangerous? <laughs> they... We're running off some of the best warriors around without the use of any weapons. We, you, you mean like, magic, right? But not, not magic like I wield or like you wield. 
There like was a, a lizard man or... in this battle. You were inside the inn, you didn't see him. But he wielded magic that was unlike anything I'd ever seen. And he attacked us with no armor, no clothing, no weapons. And he was oh, like no. a Kendall. I did not see that. That well, is that is a very bad omen. I think I think this is something we need to look into further. If we have people from this distant land, as you say, showing up here in Veer with a magic... I mean, I know all practices of magic that are even rare around us now, and I cannot even begin to understand what that lizard man out there was doing. Brieg starts rooting around in his bag while this conversation is going on and pulls out the book that we found on the ship that I have noted is written in something that is draconic-like and I compare the script on the ring to the script of the book. Is it the same? It is, yes. We've got a book, too. Harbeck also has Evil Morningstar from the very first dungeon we ever did that was, like, into that cliff face. Marking match? No. Okay. Din so, doesn't know whether she should get ready to go kill all the lizard people or go back to bed. <laughs> Does she express that to us? Because go back to bed is the answer. I think they the best found us here. Are we, are we even safe to stay at this inn or in this city? Actually, I, I feel really awkward staying at this inn when, like, we caused it to explode and killed a bunch of civilians. Um, it's, you know what? They all turned to dust. Nobody knows that they died. It's, it's clearly no one is missing them. And it's the innkeeper the seems totally fine with Harbeck just lying to him about us setting the inn on fire again. It's not the Look. first time that we've caused problems in this inn either. I mean, we were attacked here previously. The scale of problems are increasing. I don't know how long our goodwill will hold out. It seems like the only place to go from here is total destruction of the structure. Well, and I'm worried that might be the next step if the pattern I continues. Guys. I, I don't think we should do that while we're in the inn. <laughs> That's a great idea, Din. I was just thinking that uh, helping the innkeeper repair the inn and make back the losses, uh, I, it's, it's definitely something we should do. But when we're done, I bet we could pool the resources from this adventure and uh, buy or rent a place of our own that we can destroy at our leisure and not not cause anyone else any problems like there might be those seven charred piles of civilians. I think we've got bigger issues at hand than worrying about this in. I think we need to, uh, and I'm, I'm sorry Harbeck, I think we need to get back on a boat and oh, head no. back to the free lands of Amaris. Can I walk? If you can walk on water. <laughs> it's, it's a long to way be, to walk. It's got to be connected. <laughs> taking, well, taking the I, walk would, I, would also bring us right past the elven kingdoms, wouldn't it? Right. Yeah. Not not <laughs> only would it take months, we'd also have to walk right through Thacon. You don't think that's a choice. We need to get some more information, even if it is ancient stories passed down from generation to generation of one where this ring originates from or the writing on it and also if we can get any more information on this magic these lizard people if they've joined the forces of Sarath or maybe that's where Sarath is it uh, seems like contacting Rogar's tribe is probably our our best bet at finding more information about what's going on. That's this a great scene. idea, Brig. I was just thinking our only lead would be back in Kanesh. 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 
And I really don't want to go back there because I'm very angry at them. I've got these marks on my bum from the elves. And I just don't want to go back. Don't you have to give this yellow crystal to somebody before we skip town? I we don't think we're skipping a... town soon. We've got we'll to take time to prepare. And I hope they'll to... find me. A few days to rest and recover and, and do what we can to help the innkeeper before we move out permanently. And then I think I think you're Road right, Tabarin. I think heading to, to the freeland of Amorous and, and looking for Rogar's tribesmen may be our best bet at finding out more information both about Sarath and, and Kirtlemach as, as well as about this ring and, and the book and, and all everything else that's going on. You could visit your mama. In in uh, the meantime, I'd I'd really consider not wearing that ring. It doesn't appear to do anything. I mean, we did determine that it's enchanted, didn't we? En enchanted or not enchanted, it's... Oh, uh, just, just because you don't know what it does now doesn't mean it doesn't do something. Maybe it'll give me all magical crystal shooty powers. Or probably <laughs> not, I'll just put it in my bag. Magical crystal <laughs> shooty powers, okay. <laughs> um, don't you have a god inside you? Maybe he knows what the ring does. I don't know how to contact him. <laughs> and uh. I am not sure that he's a good god. I haven't really figured out what's going on yet, then. Okay. Uh, okay, so... Harbeck <laughs> uh, looks at the group and says, well, there's work to be done then, and gets himself into the brewery where he can start working on restocking his stuff and, and making a whole bunch of really nice stuff for the innkeeper to sell to attract business back at his grand reopening. So, um... Th these types of brews... Do you ever get the opportunity to mix in magical properties? Like, I know stuff like that happens, but I don't know how much control you have over it. Um, I have, like, the... As I get more levels in the Artificer class, I'll have I probably more control over it. I have some ability to work on an idea that I want and make some rolls toward it. Uh, it takes a lot of time right now, but I can... Like, if you, if you have a great idea for something you'd like me to make for you, I can work on it, and depending on Actually, how powerful it is... It's something I think that you might like. Okay. I happen to have the spell Water Walk. Oh, I don't know if I can actually incorporate, like, a spell effect, because these are... That's the, what I was wondering. Yeah, these are distinctly like non-magical, but they're, right. like... You, the effects you can be magic-like. If one of us brewed with you. Yeah, um... Well, the, I, yeah, the, the effects are, like... I mean, the, the point is that the artificers are science, right? So you're yeah. right. And we're, we're sort of replacing magic-like effects with science because magic is dying out. Um, so I assume once I get much higher level that reproducing spell effects will be on the menu, but I don't think so right now. And maybe I should just stop talking and let the dungeon master answer, because he knows. That's <laughs> basically, you know, the, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I was only bringing okay. it up because uh, if we were going to go back on the water, I thought it might give you some peace of mind. <laughs> I'm going to get my peace of mind by taking the drink I invented to sleep through the trip. It's going to be great. <laughs> um, all right, so it's been decided. You're going to help the innkeeper repair, set him up with some decent grog, give him some money, and then you're going to travel to the freelands of Amorous and try and track down Rogar's kin mm -hmm. uh, and learn a little bit more about these weird lizard folk that use crazy magics uh, and learn a little bit more about what's going on, maybe a bit more about Sarath and Kirtlemac, um, and just try and glean some information from, from people who have been heavily involved with lizard-type gods for generations, and not, have not had their, their faith watered down by the scientific method. Um, but I think that that is actually a perfect time to end the stream. Yeah. Um, and thank you for watching. There will be more D&D, &D, usually with about a two-week break in between. 
So look for Dungeons & Dragons two Fridays from now. Uh, check back on the channel when I'm not live. The video player will have the schedule for the next couple of weeks. You can find out when D&D will be. Or uh, when I'm live, I usually talk about the upcoming events at the end of the stream. Um, and eventually, I'll get some video editing software and get the backlog of all this D&D stuff I have recorded up onto YouTube. Um, hopefully, that's something I can work on as soon as the school year's over. I'll have a little bit of time to work on stream stuff. So look for that. In, my guess is, two weeks, we'll start getting the YouTube uploads going. <laughs> uh, Brig is just sitting in the corner and just... <laughs> Doing the, the Sorcerer's Apprentice. Um, he's, he's, he's Mickey Mouse with the hat on. <laughs> Nobody start chopping the brooms in half. That's when it gets bad. <laughs> A second broom enters the inn and begins right. to fight. We do need to make like a good good night YouTube so we can cut the highlight off and I don't have to do tons of video editing. So good night YouTube. Good night good YouTube. YouTube. Good, good night, night YouTube. We'll be back soon to go talk to Dragonkin about Lizardmen. <laughs>